Well, this is where we're going to start our day. This is your first time watching. I want to say welcome. If you have become a subscriber and click the button and hit the bell, I want to say welcome back. This is a Dave made one driving two. Behold the beauty of Dave made Moby one driving two. Most impressive, isn't it? So the customer sent this here and then he wanted me to turn this into a one driving four. And I said, well, okay, got to add a transformer. And then we got to add output transformers, drill the heat sink, blah, blah. And I went down the list and he's like, oh man. I said, or we just rebuild it as a one by two. This thing's got a blown uh, Toshiba in it. And we know it's blown because if we look real close at the, the lid, let's see if we can give you a close up shot of that. Figure it out, Sony, it's your job. I should go and shoot all this shit on my phone anymore. Um, we'll see that the lid has been popped off at some point or another and then glued on. And uh, this other Toshiba that's in there, it's fake. <laughs> so it's a Chinese knockoff. And then if we look down here, we'll see that the driver section is completely gone and corroded and gross. So our job, as I see it today, is we've got to restore this thing to its form, former or better glory. So we'll go in here and we'll degrease this, whatever this is. We can't stop, we can take, stop the corrosion, but we can't take the corrosion off. So we'll degrease that, stop it from losing its jizz. We're gonna blow all the filth out of the box. We're gonna give it a power wire upgrade. We're gonna put HG16D08s HG in here. Uh, put a 2290 in here as a driver. And let's see if we can get this puppy to come back to life. What you guys think? So I did a video not too long ago about why you use one cabinet for 30 different kinds of amplifiers. This could be a 250B box. This could be a four pill. This could be a two by four. This could be a six pill. And with this style of transformer, I don't know if you could get an eight pill in here or not, but this, I mean, this could be a lot of different things. This could be an actual amp deck for a 3000, this one cabinet size. So it's cheaper to buy 80 decks that are the same size, 80 boxes, 80 enclosures. It is to buy 35 different sizes and try and store all of them. So one size rules them all. Well, I'm sitting here and I'm taking the, the transistors out. And remember the one that was glued on, the lid that was glued on? Yeah, it was held on with JB Weld. JB Weld, I'm telling you. So. And we're going to have to take a good look at this Toshiba that's in here, what's left of it this other one that looks like brand new. The problem is the epoxy focus there there oh we're able to figure it out now. I got to go back to shooting this on a different camera. I got to get a different camera. God dang. The epoxy that holds the lid on is white. That's a big telltale sign cuz the stock ones it was kind of an orange color and the foot isn't quite right on this one. See if I shadow block it, it'll focus better because it has no ISO gain white setting on this camera. Um, yeah, we got a little mountain to climb to get this cleaned up, but nothing that we can't handle. But I just wanted to document that. JB Weld, baby. JB Weld. So I went ahead and I took the side off of this because I'm going to take it out and I'm going to wash it. I'll get all this old nasty flux and let us see the condition of our pill strips. But I can't help but notice this. I 
I couldn't believe it when I first seen it. Have you guys seen this yet? You see it? What are the parts that come off of here and go to ground? That's right, our 120 puff capacitors. I don't think they were ever installed from manufacturer. I don't see a solder tab or nothing. I don't. So, needless to say, um, we're going to add some caps here, here, and here. Interesting, right? That's what I said, too. Hmm. Ten thousand fists in the air. <clears throat> okay, so we worked out why this transistor keeps blowing up. It's because this pill hole was completely stripped. Completely stripped. Like you could take the screw and stick it in there and it bloop, just fall right to the bottom. No resistance. So you're on your last leg as far as this is concerned. If this pill blows again, which it shouldn't, um, but if it does for some reason you need to have this transistor replaced. You need to keep this in mind, bro, that this heat sink either needs to be replaced or it needs to be pulled out, welded, and then the transistor reinserted, or welded, drilled, and tapped. Um, I've got these really long, I went out and I got the same size screw, but they're real long and they've got a really aggressive thread to them. And it was able to grab into the edge of the heat sink wall and pull the transistor down tight. But that's usually a one-way trip. And what I mean by that is it's only good, I'd only trust that maybe one time. Then after that, we got to pull the heat sink out. I'm still kind of debating if I want to pull the heat sink completely out and just weld it up real quick and drill it out. But uh, you know what? I'm not going to even make that decision. I'm going to let you make that decision. I'm going to call you on the phone and talk to you about it right now. So I made the phone call. And I love when people aren't children and they won't let an extra 70 or 80 bucks scare them from getting something fixed right. I love that. So, his decision was pull the heatsink, let's clean this up, let's weld it up, drill it out, or <clears throat> clean it up, drill it out, weld it up. Yes, sir, this makes me happy. I'd much rather do this the right way than risk the wrong way, failing us. That's this hole right here. And when I mean stripped, it is like, check this out. Oh, wrong hole. Never mind. This is the good one. Like stripped, stripped, stripped. Stripped. Screwed up, stripped. So. That explains everything. It's into the fin. See, that would be that one right there. Fubard. So, <clears throat> let me grab a junk transistor. I'll show you what I mean, what the problem is. In theory, we don't have to weld this up. And what I mean by that is if we take a screw and put it in there flat, if we didn't have the transistor in there, see we cannot tighten this. Let me get you a little bit better angle here.
this cannot tighten. See this? Stripped. Stripped is stripped. Okay? Stripped. Like, stripped. But if we take the transistor out of the equation, the bottom end of the borehole here, per se, bottom end of the, the, all, the girl that we all knew in high school, the bottom end of her is nice and tight as it starts to pierce through the aluminum. It'll bite and hold. So in theory, we could take and use a longer screw, but within two or three times of us, you know, one or two times of us trying to get a screw in and out of that thing, it's just gonna strip out again because it's not grabbing that much on the metal. So let's fix this right. Maybe I won't buy me a welder. She goes, why? She goes, I want to be able to glue metal together. She goes, what? I said, because I want to be able to glue metal together. She goes, I didn't know you knew how to weld. Said, oh, baby. So there's all kinds of levels to me you haven't yet even discovered. <laughs> Here we are today, she's bringing home a horse trailer. Hey baby, can you uh, weld in this, 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 and the other thing for the, the feed bag? A hot. Hey you.
little tiny maybe high spot yep not anything a transistor is going to care about but I'll know about it flat enough for me just do it right or don't even bother doing it at all my opinion or at least do the best that you can with the tools that you have at hand and don't try to half-ass anything <clears throat> or don't intentionally half-ass anything I don't know what had gotten down underneath here but this is all pitted but all right let's put it back in the amp mock it up let's punch a hole let's get on with this Start that one. Get this one started. Oh, I'm not lined up right. Come on. There we go. A little bit more. A little bit more, G.I. Joe. There we go. I guess in theory what I could have done is flip it over and drill it from the back side. But we're done. We got it, we got it marked. Oh, pill screw down. Pill screw down. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. <clears throat> I will sleep better tonight <clears throat> knowing this is done right. I need a drink of water. Eesh. Sleep like a baby. So one last thing I gotta think about going out in the world that might come back and be a problem. All right. Thank you.
quite tight. Okay, I don't know what you're deciding to focus on camera and I don't care. I'm going to make you focus, right? There. Oh, it's tight. Oh, it's tight. Tight. All right. That would have been funny if I would have ran that in and it stripped out. There's some people out there in the world that would have thought that was hilarious. I think that's a problem. Okay. Now, assuming that everything is right with our rectifiers, we're good to go. Added our 120 puff capacitors. Gave it the 5 watt resistor upgrade. Did a power wire upgrade to it. Added two 2879 HG16D08s to it. Rebuilt the driver section. Put a 2290 in it. This should all be correct the way I understand the things in the universe to work. So, got Bubkus. Fuse holder is good. Now it's deciding to work. Okay, it's working now. Fuse holder dirty, I guess. Let's see what happens here. Slide this wide to the side. Slug out, doesn't want to slug in, turn on a peak kit. Come here. 1X. Let's see, OPT in standby, put her in standby. Hello. Alright, talk through it, no problem. Hello. Fixed. So Thousand watt slug and peak, thousand and average. Hello, audio one two one two. Hello, come in. Hello, audio. This is the variable all the way up. Hello, hello. It's actually doing really good. Six hundred and fifty watts out of two transistors. I call that winning by anybody's standard. Delay circuit is working for the keying circuit. So, it's all working. Now this amp is not biased for sideband. Although it has a sideband switch. And really what that is, is just a low keying circuit delay. All it does is delay the relay just a little bit. But we'll put this in standby. Turn this 5 watt slug around. Let's go back over here and look real quick. So right now we're putting one watt worth of drive into it. And one watt worth of drive. Let's turn this back around. Now we're gonna be on this meter here. It's in one X and peak envelope. One watt in gets us 
four watts out carrier, which is not too bad. One watt, around four watts. But man, the peak power, good old audio. Good Lord almighty. Run our dead key up here to about 100 watts. Good old one, two, at oh, one, two, at oh, a 250 bird and 600 to 700 watts peak. And I blame it all on the transformer. Transformer power. Now, if we wanted to do it into a 1x4, we'd have to add another transformer, which they have the holes drilled for it, but they've got little rubber stoppies blocking the holes. But this is done. Now there's one other little problem that we've got to address, just one. I told myself about 10 times that I should have dealt with this, and don't forget to deal with this, when you have the heat sink out of the amplifier. And I totally forgot about it. It's this hole on this side of the board that we've got to block off over here because it's letting all the air go right out and not through the heat sink. Even though as far as 1x4 or 1x2s go, this thing's got a mile and a half of heat sink underneath it. Let's go ahead and give it the best prayer. Now on the back side, they've already got it blocked off with tape. It's normally not the way I like to do it, but that's the way this one has been done. We're going to leave that be because it's still doing exactly the job we need it to do. But this hole down there is a problem. So all that really takes is a piece of phenolic board, some double-sided stick tape, and the gumption to stick it down there and block off the hole. So now all the air from the entire cabinet has to go through the heat sink and out even though this thing is never, ever going to get hot enough. Uh, okay, it don't matter. Let's get the side on it and let's check out the fans. Oh, gross. Gross. Just dust. I'm sitting here listening to these guys on Pell Talk. All they're doing is talking about Skip finally. It's been like two years of them talking about anything but Skip. cancer causing shit from California. Oh, sorry. Everything causes cancer in California. What am I saying? Alright. We'll go to those blades. A, a prayer of moving air. Let's get all the dirt cleaned off of them. Alright. Well, we're at the tail end of this story. Uh, clear. Here it is. And what we're going to do is since we've de-oiled everything in here, we're just going to come through and we're going to shoot this down with a light layer of clear. Because wherever this guy lives, it's obviously had some exposure to water. And if we shoot that down with clear, just like that, we can stop the corrosion that is taking place inside of here. So. Like I said, we cleaned all this up, got all the oil off the board, cleaned up all the corroded bolts and shit that were over here in a corner, got all this to stop corroding, and then we washed it with acetone to 
clean the board up and get all the flux off it before we went and rebuilt the two pill section. So now all we did was shoot a little thin layer of clear on this and all of our other connections, including our transformer, which we washed off as well. And that'll seal the metal and it'll keep it from um, getting icky gross again. So, and oxidizing away. Our little fans are working just fine. We slap some screws in this thing and uh, we'll swing it up there one more, two more times and we'll call it good. Okay. But it was fun. Now that I'm done with this, I gotta go build a four pill. But at the end of the day, remember, low drive, low drive. I don't know why everybody that gets one of these things or for some reason these giant cubes have a tendency to just explode for some reason because you, people will drive the snot out of them, but low drive, low drive. Okay, let's turn on a peak kit. <clears throat> Put about 22, 23 watts in it. And oh, audio one, two, one, two. Which, if you think about it, this is silly impressive for a, just a one drive and two. And oh, one, two, one, 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 two, one, two, one, two. I think we're going to call this a win for the home team, guys. I really am. Gentlemen, my name is BBI. Without a shadow of a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck around this Idaho thing. It's fun as always. Appreciate every single one of you tuning in, following along, and watching this little rebuild of this little one by two. Um, yeah. Come check us out. www.bbiamps.com. Come follow me on Facebook. BBI Amps, the group on Facebook. There's 4,000 of us in there. Very active group. Very active group on Facebook. Also, BBI Video Gates, Northwest Corner Gates. Yeah, come join. Come join us on Facebook. Don't send me a friend's request. I can't take on any more friends. I'm maxed out. Come join the group on Facebook. Questions or anything I can do to help you out about your equipment or anything I can do to help, don't hesitate to call. I appreciate you. I'll see you. Bye-bye.